way to get started with adding our bacon. The reason I go with adding the bacon first is because it does release a lot of oil. So it's perfect coat for the rest of our pan. We don't need to add any more oil, which is perfect. And again, I just like continued um, stirring this until it's a nice, you know, crispy bacon. And then once it gets to, you know, to my liking, I like to remove it and set it aside. The next up is our sausage. So as you can see right here, it has a lot of that oil from our bacon. It's perfect. You're just going to add your meat and you want to continue, uh, what's it called, cooking this meat all the way through, obviously. And then once again, the same thing with the bacon. Once it gets to a nice golden, you know, crispiness to it, you're going to do the same thing where you're going to remove it and set it aside. After our meat is done, we're going to add our onions. And I add about, like I said, about half an onion. And I like to get this to a nice, like, translucent color. And I really like to, like, kind of scrape the side of my pan. Because all that darkness is just a bunch of flavor that literally is stuck there. So it's perfect to really, um, what's it called, scrape off the rest of the stuff that's on the side. And then after I've gotten that translucent enough, I add my uh, garlic. And I typically stir this for about a minute or two. Kind of also it gets a little bit softened, so I just continue stirring. And then once we have that done, then you're going to add your chicken broth. So you want to make sure you add your whole chicken broth. You can do um, regular chicken broth. There's also like low sodium, whatever you like. I sometimes uh, go back and forth. It's just whatever it's available. That's what I get. And then once I've had already my chicken broth in there, I do add about eight to nine cups of water. It just really depends up to you. Um, they just kind of how I like to do it and you want to make sure that you stir it to get all the flavors mixed together And you want to make sure that your pot boils um, Before you add anything else So once your pot has boiled then you can add your potatoes So you want to make sure that you add your potatoes and again, you want to make sure that uh, they boil back up again and that um, They're not fully cooked but just enough for you to like maybe put a fork through. I typically let my potatoes boil for about 10 to 15 minutes, give or take. And then after that, I like to add the rest of our ingredients that we already cooked prior, like our sausage and our bacon. After we've added our sausage and our bacon, it is time for us to add the heavy whipping cream. I also add a little bit of water just to wash out the heavy whipping cream uh, carton. So then you just want to uh, want to go stir this up and make sure that you cover it up and wait for it to boil again. So once it's already started boiling back up, it's time for us to add our chopped kale. So for the kale, I typically add about half a bag. This is uh, 16 ounces. So I add about eight ounces, sometimes a little bit more, a little bit less. It really is up to you. Um, you can definitely modify this. So after our kale, it's time to season it. And I will say that when it comes to seasoning, I don't have any uh, actual measurements. I just add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and adjust it as you go. I will say if you are not a big fan of spice, then don't add the red pepper flakes. Um, but yes, you just want to add little by little and then just adjust it uh, based on how, you know, you like it. 
So after I've seasoned my soup, I do let it boil for another two to four minutes before I serve it. And just like that, the soup in Toscana is done. At the very end, I, I like to add a little bit of the Parmesan cheese. I make a little bit of garlic bread and that's just the way I like to eat it. So if you guys really enjoyed this video, give it a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.